some of the teachings talk about self-liberation as that this openness, this view, this vastness, this emptiness is so present that anything that comes up in it that in any way is under the illusion of separation, suffering, it automatically dissolves. That's great. I hope that that is my experience moment by moment by moment. But I don't know about you. There does seem to be different patterns that arise, different appearances that arise that do have a charge, a story, a conditioning. And what we do with that, of course, is whether we believe that conditioning and try to do something about the conditioning, or when the conditioning arises, is there just simply this open welcoming and permeation? The paradox is we enter actually all of the different facets of the personality of the individual. And There's a faction that believes that if you take apart each and every one of these conditionings and make them conscious, that somehow that will bring freedom. And so it's a great trap, actually, for those who are diving into their trauma and diving into their psychology and diving into their karma, you know, whatever sort of um, angle they, they enter this exploration. And it just spins year after year after year after year after year after year after year. You just get more and more sophisticated and more able to know what your patterns are and your conditionings are. And you can talk about them to everyone. And you find other people that sort of are exploring in this way. And then there's another faction that just says none of that's true, none of it exists, it's all just illusion and da 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 da. And so they just sort of hang out almost as a um, refuge in the great empty, the great ground. This really doesn't mean anything. It's it's all you know, just unfolding. It's it's all an illusion. It's all a delusion. And I don't know whether you've noticed, but there's been a lot of crashing and burning in a lot of our spiritual teachers and centers and everywhere else because there were parts that were denied. And right now, all of that seems to be brought to the surface. So the paradox is how in this vast, empty beingness, which if any of us look, we always find the same thing. That's all there is, really. We can call it love. We can call it, you know, all the words that we were taught in whatever tradition we've been exposed to or dedicated to. But we can't separate out from our unique individuation. It's our individuation that actually serves this great being, right? It's our uniqueness. It's what we found in our unique journeys. This is what we have to contribute. We no longer are identified with it. We no longer are living in this contracted view of, of this individuation. But at a certain point, it's actually the contribution. It's actually the service. Your uniqueness is the service. And no one can replace that. It's... It's precious, this uniqueness.
So how is it that we can rest and deepen and dissolve and live from and express this vast consciousness, this vast being, this silent, empty nature, the aloma. And yet, not in any way separate out as this temporary, this individual is extraordinarily temporary. This unique individuation. They're this. One is temporary, one is constant. But they can't be separated out. That that arises and expresses itself through this uniqueness comes from the same ground. And in, in no way can it be separate. In no way can it be separate. 